Hi, and welcome. Uh, today we're going to be doing a little bit of anodizing. A lot of people would like to be able to anodize aluminum, but in general have been kind of put off by the fact that you have to use sulfuric acid or battery acid. That's this nasty, nasty stuff. Uh, hard to ship, uh, dangerous, uh, considered uh, almost non-shippable. Uh, the price for shipping this runs, you know, considerably more. And in some parts of the to the world, it's not even available unless you have a license. So we're not going to be using this. This is this is causes burns and it's corrosive and yeah, just not a good thing. So I've come up with an alternative. The alternative is a fairly simple one. Uh, it's used in swimming pools around the world. Uh, it's called sodium bisulfate and in this case it's called pH down and it's designed to bring the pH of swimming pools down. So it's available almost everywhere and uh, you can get a lot more information on my website but I'll, I'll get to that in a few minutes. But this is a material that is uh, easy to transport, usually easy to find locally, fairly inexpensive, and it does as good a job as sulfuric acid does. And uh, we'll show you how it's done. Uh, let me show you a couple of the things that I have have done. And this is using RIT dye. A RIT dye as you know is for clothes for clothing. But you can see that the results are are reasonably good. Uh, they are uh, since they are designed since the dyes are designed for for clothing, uh, it's not going to be as good as the professional uh, dye like Caswell uh, or are there others that are really designed for uh, doing aluminum. So I also tried some some wire. I don't know if you're going to be able to see that, but I was thinking about crafts and what what might be able to be done with crafting. And uh, so there's a some aluminum wire. I also even tried uh, heavy duty aluminum foil. And I was actually I was pretty surprised. It actually turned out pretty good. I was I was kind of happy with that. Uh, so for crafts that might be really kind of a helpful thing to to, to think about. It's really easy to do this. Uh, but this is introductory. Uh, it's like anything else. It's a hobby that you can start off slow and learn as you go and become better. Uh, and uh, So let me go through what, what's going on here. Uh, this is a 2% solution of sodium hydroxide, which is just simply you know, drain cleaner, household dry cleaner. It's a uh, hundred percent, and uh, this is a two percent solution, so it's it's fairly weak. And this is a rinse water, and this is the sodium bisulfate, and I already have the cathode in here. It's just a a chunk of uh, aluminum scrap aluminum that I had around, and uh, so that's that's pretty easy to find. So this is a 20% solution of sodium bisulfite, which is this, and uh, so pretty straightforward, no no big deal. So the sodium hydroxide is an alternative step, uh, and I'll I'll go through it real, real quickly, uh, and then they have we have another rinse, and then we have the the dyes that I have, and I'm not going to go through the, the whole process. You've just seen what I've anodized. So, I mean, it's going to take, it takes a little while to do this. But a couple of key details. Uh, the first is that one of the keys to uh, having good anodizing is in the cleaning. So frequently, what I do, uh, and I'm going to correct, this is actually an update from uh, what's, uh, what is on my website. This video is, a, is actually an update. And one of the mistakes that I made on that first video was the fact that I used steel wool. And that should not be used. 
uh, that can embed iron in the aluminum surface. Now aluminum uh, actually has a coating on it already uh, of the oxide. It comes as soon as it's, it's forged or manipulated in any way. Uh, it forms an oxide as soon as it hits the air. Uh, it's aluminum oxide. And uh, so the purpose of anodizing is to add a little, a uh, little more hardness, but in most cases it's to, as I've just shown you, to become uh, more decorative, so you can dye it, and uh, you know, change the colors and have some fun with it. So, uh, if you use the sodium hydroxide, which I'll, I'll show here, and one of the one of the things to 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 consider is. How do you connect the how do you connect the parts so that you don't have any anything other than aluminum inside the etching solution, which is true for all anodizing. So I just use a piece of aluminum wire and just kind of force it in so that it makes contact. So you know move it around a little bit and then you can just put it in. It only takes a couple of minutes and uh, you'll get a reasonably uh, good clean etched etch surface. However, it will be a matte finish. If you want uh, a really a, a higher grade finish, then what you're going to need to do is uh, use something like Scotch Bright, and that's this material and a detergent. And then just kind of clean it up as as best you can. Uh, if you want a really high grade, then you need to polish it with either a high speed Dremel or you know some kind of a, a, a buffing wheel uh, that jewelers would use, or you know some people have these at home. So once you, once you've you've etched it, then it's simply into a rinse solution. And it's ready to go directly into into the into the anodizing solution. And now in this case, I've used I'm using a power supply that's a, a 12 volt. Now I have used uh, these rechargeable batteries. Uh, God, I've even used it for small pieces. I've used uh, flashlight batteries, D cells. So, uh, an alternative that is pretty easy to find everywhere is a uh, car battery charger. Those turn out to be for for this kind of you know scale, this level. Uh, you can do a pretty good job with it. So, since it's called anodizing, the positive side of the power goes to the uh, anode, which is the piece of aluminum that we want to that we want to anodize. And the, the bubbles have already started. You'll notice right away there is a, a, a liberation of uh, bubbles on the cathode, which is the negative side of the power supply. <coughs> and uh, Oh, you also can use a wall ward. I was going to mention that too. Uh, if you have enough, uh, one with enough amperage. Uh, and in general, uh, the, the rule of thumb would be something like about 145 to 150 milliamps per square inch of aluminum. Uh, so if you're doing six square inches, that would be, you know, you'd still be at 750 milliamps, which is less than less than, than one amp, and a lot of uh, wall warts will go to that without any problem at all. And you can really see the bubbles kind of, you know, coming off those little hydrogen bubbles, and at this scale, they're not a problem. So, uh, for square inch, uh, 145 to 150 milliamps, or that would be, so in centimeters, that would be, what, 6.5 centimeters. So, uh, so you think you need to think of those terms, but on the website I have a lot more information, and uh, you're really going to need to go there because 
there's a lot of there's a lot of good information that is going to be really really helpful for you. Uh, now the size of the cathode should really be about twice the size of whatever you're anodizing. Now, that's kind of a rule of thumb. There are an awful lot of rules of thumb, and uh, so you you have to uh, th you know start this off slow. Give it some thought as you as you do it, and in a in a way, consider that uh, uh, this is a learning process. In some ways, it it certainly is a science, but it's it's an art as well. So there's a lot uh, that that can be done. Uh, now, if you want to check your uh, one of the other mistakes that I made on the original web uh, the original video was that I said that uh, you know, I was going to raise the temperature to see what happened uh, and that's something you do not want to do you need to keep this as cool as possible so if you're doing larger pieces and uh, it gets too hot it's going to slow down the anodizing now one of the things that uh, I also want to show you on a, on a flat piece uh, let me get one of these pieces. On a flat piece like this, well, let me get let me get the other one. That that is actually one that I did this way. This is one that uh that I had done. There's always a, a question of how you uh, attach uh, an electrode to it. And what I do is I make it like a little paper clip out of aluminum wire. And titanium actually is a better wire. Uh, but it's not always available and you can just simply make the paper clip uh, the the contact and then you, uh, this is going to take about an hour uh, or so so you know I go for 20 minutes and then I you know end for end it and do the other end so that it, the whole thing gets anodized so that's one way of uh, of, connect, of, of making the connection. The other is to use an aluminum basket. Uh, there are food products. Uh, there's some you know, equipment they use for, 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 for you know, uh, sieving and, and all these kinds of things that are available in, in a local hardware store. Um, and when you anodize the the closer it comes to to the end of the process, the more insulated the surface becomes. So what what does that mean? This aluminum piece of wire, and you don't want to put any other metal in there other than either aluminum or titanium. Uh, you really you really don't want it. That'll can that'll just contaminate it, and it's it's going to cause a lot of problems. So when you get when I get done with this one. What I'll do is, I'll take that contact out of there, and I'll put that contact into the sodium hydroxide. It will clean off the surface again, so that it's reusable and it's no longer an insulator. So that's one way to to continue to use aluminum. If I were to continue to use that aluminum wire as a contact, it would eventually get to the point where it wouldn't it wouldn't conduct electricity. So. But here's here's one of what I wanted to get the one of the points I wanted to get across, is that uh, on the website, uh, and I'll I'll also put a link to it. Uh, there are over 240 comments of people that have had great success with this process, and I developed this specifically to get away from battery acid because I knew it was getting in the way of a lot of people having some fun with this. Uh, but there's a good write up. It gives you the actual amounts of everything. Uh, and the video, you can watch the video if you want to, but it's 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 very similar to this one, uh, with the exception of the credit, the uh, mistakes that I made there. Uh, but it's actually, uh, and it's also a, an excellent uh, link to the Encyclopedia of Electrochem uh, Electrochemistry. It is an awesome, awesome article about uh, anodizing and how pores are formed and how they uh, 
how the dies take, and uh, just a really good link, and that's at the bottom of the write-up. So I would encourage you to go to the go to the website and and read some of these comments and and uh, read the write-up. Uh, so when I get to the point where uh, I'm going to take this out eventually, I, you know, I'm not going to go through the whole thing because you've already seen the pieces. Uh, it'll go into a rinse solution and then go right directly into into the dye. Now one of the things that, that you might want to do is is to have a uh, uh, pH paper, which is fairly fairly standard and easy to find online and even some hobby stores. And it'll tell you whether or not the acid is depleted. And in, in the case of an acid, if it's red, this says pH is, you know, we're, we're fairly we're fairly low uh, on on pH. We're down we're down around two. So with seven being neutral, and you can use that same the same technique to, to check the sodium hydroxide. Okay, uh, so to to wrap this up, uh, pH paper is really kind of helpful when you want to check the pH of of the acid or in this case, the the brown is the is the the pH is above well it's above thirteen, so it's it's definitely a base. So so let's uh, try and wrap this up. Uh, I hope you give it a try, but definitely head over to the website and uh, do a little bit of reading and uh, try and uh, you know uh, start off slow. With small pieces and work your way up and uh, have some fun that's that's what this is all about so hey I appreciate you watching this is Ken thanks a lot <laughs>